Okay, this morning we're doing our Red OB Dragon Bloods. Give you a brief history of this. Also, you get some history I'll post in the header or in the, the description of the video, the link for a video we did in June of 2022, which was just a little over a year after the winter storm, which is in February of 2021, January, February 2021. We, during that winter storm, we lost most of uh, this strain. Uh, we saved some youngsters. We grew them up. And the June 2022 uh, video uh, shows us trying to, to uh, rebuild the, the strain. Uh, this will give an update on it. Uh, let me see. A little bit more history. We got this fish originally in March of 2015 when I was talking to clubs in Los Angeles and San Francisco. We drove up the valley, we stopped at a shop and, and they had some of these, we got them. We originally called them California dragon bloods, but then we split them into red dragon bloods and red OB dragon bloods. And the, the, the genetics of the strain is a little bit complicated. So what I'm gonna do at the end of this video, I'll do a whiteboard presentation of the genetics the genes that are involved are dragon blood gold ob and the non-ob and the the non-gold dragon blood and but i'll go over that on a whiteboard presentation where it's easier to do it let's take a look at our two breeder males the bigger one is my favorite but we go with what we have right now both of these will go back in the breeding colony and you know, he's nice he's got nice blue on him uh, the ob pattern is blue he's got uh, a dark gold body uh, with uh, a lot of red highlights so put him back in there this guy's not quite as brightly colored but we'll keep him now i want to look at three young males they're very young and then we'll discuss some females. I'm probably going to put this guy because he's a little bit bigger. He looks like he's going to be pretty good. I'm going to put him in the breeding colony grow up. These other two are going to go into our, what we call BRU, Breeders Unsexed, to take a look at again. I'm not really happy with this string yet. He's, I think, going to be nice. It's throwing a lot of different fish and let me show you some of those well first let's look at the uh, females and what i select for in females okay fishy don't jump okay the bigger ones in here are current breeders i like the darker orange that's a really nice one there this female is going to get purged she's too pale so she's going to go to a sale vet i'll pick her up this is a nice female these two youngsters are smaller ones are daughters of those two males and they're going to be added to the breeding colony what i did in the breeding colony i purged 13 fish that looked like that pale one i took out i kept 30 females that looked pretty much like these big ones and i added 19 little ones that are daughters of those two males and that's Part of the inbreeding program we do to improve a strain. We inbreed back to these two good males and we continue that process. I've gone as far as great great granddaughters in this process in order to fix a strain. And I'll talk more about inbreeding when I do the whiteboard and how it's an excellent tool. Okay, before we look at some other fish, I want to put these breeders up. I don't want to stress them anymore. And it's just a short trip over here. This is their 300 gallon vat. The other females are already in there. I just added the, the uh, three males that I wanted, the two older breeders. I'm going to take these two young males and take them over to our BRU vat. And again, BRU stands for Breeders Unsexed. Now they're sexed, but they're basically those are fish that I want to grow up and look at. This female will go to the sale vat. And let's take a look at these fish to show you the variation in this population. 
And what I'm trying to do by inbreeding is reduce the variation and get everybody looking like those two males that I want. Okay. Uh, this is a male that is an interesting OB, but he's not a good red OB. Same thing here. This is more of a blue OB. This one's kind of a sky blue OB. A barely OB. You see just a few black spots, but he has a gene. This is a non-OB out of this strain. That means that some of our males, at least one of our males and some of our, at least one of our females are carrying the recessive non-OB and we are still getting some of those. This is a non-OB female and they are all, these are also recessive for non-gold. This is the gold that dragon bloods have. So these, these two males and this female are uh, recessive for uh, non-OB and recessive for non-gold. Okay, so these fish will all go to be sold. And let's see, anything else? I think that's it for this portion. Like I say, right after this, I'll do a whiteboard presentation talking about the genetics that I just touched on, on here and how we use inbreeding to get in the characteristics we want in a strain. The aim is to get this strain to be at least 90% good red OB males. Okay, good fish keeping. Okay, we're going to do a whiteboard for our red OBs. We're still working out production issues or we need a studio. The lighting is kind of weird in here. It's sometimes hard to read this. I wrote this up because if I try to do it on the fly, it just doesn't work very well. I'm not a good enough graphic artist to do it. As you can tell, I'm not that great even when I do it ahead of time. Okay, there are three characteristics we look at in our red OBs. One is red, one is gold, and one is OB. A good red OB has a lot of red. He has a gold body color and background color and has OB. OB is a blotching characteristic. It originally meant orange blotch and it referred to the coloration in, in another Lake Malawi cichlid. And that cichlid was crossed to others. And typically the blotching is, is either dark blue or black, not orange in, in our peacocks. Okay, first of all, there isn't a red gene in fish. Fish don't produce red pigments. They get red pigments from their diets. And whether they're red or not is subject to a number of other genes that, that determine how much red they lay down, where they lay it down, how bright it is. So there are a lot of different genes involved in selection for red. And about the only thing you can do is pick the reddest fish, the ones that had the most red or the red where you want it, the brightness, the tone that you want, and use them as breeders. Gold, however, is a on or off. It's binary either you are gold or you're not gold. And in this particular strain, gold is a dominant characteristic. So if you in inherit a single allele for gold from one of your parents, you're going to be gold regardless of what you get from the other parent. OB also in this strain is a dominant characteristic. So as long as you have one copy of OB, you're going to be. Able to illustrate this, let's take a look uh, at this. Uh, what I've set up here is the, a cross between a male gold OB, uh, gold OB and a female gold OB, and with both of them being heterozygous. So th this male has one copy of the dominant gold one copy of the non-dominant recessive gray, or, or the males end up being blue, the females end up being gray. It has one copy of OB, dominant OB, and this plus indicates the non-OB, which will end up with a, a non-blotched fish. So if you cross these two fish that are heterozygous for both characteristics, you get, this is a 16 gr cell grid you end up with, and what I've done, I've shown genetically what it is and then what the phenotype, what it looks like. So 
a fish that inherits a copy of gold from both parents and a copy of OB from both parents can be gold OB. But a fish that has two copies of gold and only one copy of OB is still going to be a gold OB. And all the way down to this situation where the fish gets one copy of gold, one of non-gold, one of OB, one of non-OB, and it's still a gold OB. So if you count up these things, of these 16 outcomes, nine of them are going to be gold OBs, three are going to be gold non-OBs, and three are going to be blue or gray. If they're males, they're going to be blue. If they're females, they're going to be gray OB. And you're, but you're only going to have one down, down here in this corner, blue if you're male or gray if you're female, and non-OB. And you may remember from the video I showed fish of each of these character types. Now, when you combine gold with OB, you don't get a bright gold fish. The OB gene tends to, to fade it out, but you, the basic background color is gold, kind of a gray overlay. Okay, so in our last batch, we got all these characteristics. We didn't get quite one sixteenth of the blue non OBs or, or the gray non OBs because that's rarer in the population because we have some fish that, that don't have the recessive at all. And each generation that goes by, by selecting only gold OBs, we end up reducing the percentage of fish that have the recessives and eventually the recessives will disappear. It's a lot easier to select for a dominant than it is to select for, excuse me, it's actually easier to select for a recessive because this fish, if I mate a male that looks like this to a female that looks like this, they're all going to be blue non-OBs because they're recessive, homozygous recessive for both characteristics. Okay, so as an aside, this strain is kind of interesting because it acts like our other OB peacocks on the OB characteristic because the OB is dominant, but it acts like our gold peacocks, and we'll have a video on them later for gold because gold is dominant over non-gold in this strain. That's not true of most of the peacocks. Okay, let's see, do I cover everything? I think so. So we just keep selecting for fish that are gold OBs and the recessive alleles for non-OB and for non-gold get rarer in each generation. If I were a hobbyist and I had a bunch of small tanks and I want to do one male to one female, I could actually do test crosses and determine whether somebody's heterozygous or not and speed up this process. But we do it through mass selection by just not using any breeders that aren't gold or OB, gold and OB. Okay, good fish keeping.